Ready? Yeah. You ready? Boom! You ready? <laughs> What's up, everybody? This is Titan, Titans of CNC. I'm here with my boy, Jesse. We got two things going on. One is Jesse is gonna show you a real world solution to many machinist problems. And that is when you're machining and you're getting chatter in your part. How do you get rid of that chatter? He's gonna go over the different steps to get rid of that chatter thus giving you the skills to pay the bills. And we found an amazing winner that actually won this stack of thousand dollar bills. A couple weeks ago, I was on this machine. We said, hey, we're gonna actually give away a thousand one dollar bills. And today we're gonna show you the comment that was put underneath that YouTube video that won this person the prize. One thousand dollars, boom, so stick around to the end. All right, brother, you take it away. All right. All right, guys, let's get into it. if you guys can see this but you can actually see a little bit of chatter in this part now this surface may look a little worse to you guys because it's got a little bit of welding of the chips back to the material but that's because we're not running coolant now you guys know 316 is really prone to build up heat really quick so you really need to be running coolant on this material but if i hadn't have done this i would have seen this chatter in my first part and possibly could have scrapped it sometimes chatter can come in your setup with a part which very well could be since i don't have any support now the jaws are holding it really well but it could be not well enough to give me a good surface finish so I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you guys what the top three contributing factors to poor surface quality is. And number one is rigidity in your fixture or setup. The only reason why I'm able to get away with holding the material this way is because I'm using these serrated jaws from Sean. They're gripping into the material on both sides and keeping it from moving. I've got the torque set to the highest setting on the vise. And once I tightened it the first time, I unclamped it and then re-tightened it again to make sure those teeth have a good bite on the material. So the teeth and the jaws are really gripping into that material and not allowing it to go anywhere. So I know the work holding is rigid and not the problem. Number two is rigidity in your tool and holder. This is a very big tool. It's a one inch diameter core six, but we start with a holder. Now this is a big plus holder, meaning I have dual contact with the taper surface and the top surface of the holder. Now dual contact holders or big plus holders are extremely rigid, but two we're using the hydroforce and now these holders have a huge diameter here. Now on top of a dual contact, two things that you need to think about when it comes to rigidity in a tool holder is the projection length and the diameter of your holder. Now you can see this Hydroforce holder has a huge diameter here. It's gonna be super rigid around this tool. But this holder is also 80 millimeters long, which is pretty short. But we're also using Kinemetal Safe Lock System, which is gonna prevent this tool from pulling out. We're using a robust short holder with a lot of clamping force. So the shorter the holder is, the more rigid it will be because it will be closer to the spindle interface. So I know we're not getting any vibration from the tool itself. Don't forget to stick around to the end of this video because somebody's gonna win this $900. Hopefully it's one of my 20 fake accounts that I created to win this money. And number three is the amount of tool pressure you're actually putting on the tool. Every tool needs a certain amount of pressure to balance out the harmonics and stabilize the tool. If you don't have enough tool pressure, the tool is going to bounce or vibrate when it's cutting. So since I'm using such a big tool and I've already determined that my setup and the tool assembly are both solid, then the tool pressure is what my issue is here. In some cases, simply dropping the surface footage will fix chatter issues because dropping the RPM and keeping the feed rate the same, then you're increasing the chip load, which is going to increase the tool pressure. You can also reverse this and keep the surface footage the same and increase your feed rate. Another thing you can do is adjust the amount of stock you're leaving for finishing. In this case, I'm going to simply drop my surface footage so it increases the tool pressure and cuts down on vibration at the same time. Try to remember that there's no singular solution to getting rid of chatter. Every situation is unique, but following these steps can help you determine a solution much faster. 
Oh man, Travis, it's time. Yes, sir. Ooh, and we are excited because we're going to announce the winner of this stack of $1,000 bills. Now there's three things that you guys had to do. One is subscribe to our channel. Two, tell us an amazing story. Not just a story, but a manufacturing story. And thirdly, we wanted you to guess the height of this $1,000 stack of bills. Boom. Oh man. All right. Now, Travis is actually gonna take that measurement. Go ahead, Travis, let's go. Let's do it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna zero off the granite real quick. All right, from that position, we're gonna come up and we're gonna find our high spot. And we'll do a little bit of sweeping. Backwards, I don't see any change. A oh, little kick right there, but it doesn't look like we have any higher than we had down here. There. Come into my zero here. I'm gonna come to about a half thou away. 4.705, I'm gonna try to come in one tenth at a time and see if I can get my display to change because I have a half thou resolution. And actually that did change to 4.710. I'm gonna subtract four more tenths. All right, so Travis just finished measuring the stack of $1,000 bills and the exact height is? 4.7096. Ooh. All right, so we're gonna actually take a break and we're gonna come back with the winner in just one second. Be back in a flash. Oh man, we have a winner. We have a winner for the $1,001 bills and the winner is Jameson Stout. Brother, yeah, yeah. I feel so good. So Jameson, why, why did we pick you? We picked you because we loved your story. Your story was awesome. It was great, right? It was a super cool story, man. Super yeah. cool. Young guy, new to the trade, right? Absolutely. He's an operator, and I loved how he said he loves transforming raw stock into spectacular parts. And that is what this trade is about. He's a young guy, and he has a child on the way in a few months. Yeah. How cool. Right? We could have picked a lot of different people, but I love the fact that this is a young guy that's passionate about the trade. He has a new addition coming into the family. He probably doesn't have a lot of tools. He can use the money. And another thing that I like is this, it was pretty unanimous. Our whole team went through and voted and his name came up the most. It did, absolutely. I picked him, Tyson picked him, a couple yeah. other people. And so Jameson, hey, congratulations, man. Congratulations, woo, love this trade. So. Jameson, we're gonna reach out to you and then we're gonna send you, we're going to bless you with a thousand dollars. Boom, you won it, that is awesome. And to everybody else, thank you so much for participating. We love you guys, we love this trade. We'll have more giveaways, so keep watching these videos. It's gonna be good. Yes, sir. Boom, we're out. See you guys next time.